Hare Krishna devotees, please accept Muhammad obeisances. Welcome to Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 11, verse 22. And the chapter is entitled, The Entrance of Lord Krishna into Dwarka. And we are very happy to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami, who is going to be giving the class. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept Muhammad obeisances. All glories to you. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Uh, the world glories, but my basis is I got I got a guest with me. Can you I, know? I was one, I was trying to recognize him, Maraj. He'll say so, say something. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Bhakti Tirtha Swami Jai. Chandra Prabhu. Hare Bo. Hare Bo. Even with my glasses, I still can't see. <laughs> That's probably Except a good thing. Prabhu, all good to your profile, Gurudev. Yeah. Yeah, he's in London with me for a while. I was going to ask, Maharaj, are you in U.S.? Did you just come like 10 days early? <laughs> so I'll speak something, and maybe uh, if you want, you can add. Chandra can speak a few words. Is that all right? Yes, Marge. It's, it's, it's you're the boss, Marge. You can do whatever you want to do, Marge. I'm, a, I'm just at your servant. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, let's hope that Mr. Internet doesn't uh, blow the whole thing on us, but <laughs> let's, let's give it a try. No problem, Marge. Okay, here we, here we go. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Shima Bhagavate 1, Canto 1, Chapter 11, Verse Number 22. Pavabi Vadanai Slesa Karas Parsas Simekshanai Aswaya Kasvapik Kekyo Vadais Chabi Matayar Vivahu Translation. The Almighty Lord greeted everyone present by bowing his head, exchanging greetings, embracing, shaking hands, looking and smiling, giving assurances and awarding benedictions, even to the lowest in rank. I'll read that again. The Almighty Lord greeted everyone present by bowing his head, exchanging greetings, embracing, shaking hands, looking and smiling, giving assurances and awarding benedictions even to the lowest in rank. To receive Lord Sri Krishna, there were all grades of population beginning from Vasudev, Gurusena, Gargamuni, the grandfather, father, and teacher down to the prostitutes and chandalas were accustomed to eat dogs. And everything was, and every one of them was properly greeted by the Lord in terms of rank and position. As pure living entities, all are the separated parts and parcels of the Lord, and thus no one is alien by his eternal relation. Such pure living entities are graded differently in terms of contamination of the modes of the material nature. But the Lord is equally affectionate to all his parts and parcels, despite material gradation. He descends only to recall these materialistic living beings back to his kingdom. And intelligent persons take advantage of this facility offered by the personality of Godhead to all living beings. No one is rejected by the Lord from the kingdom of God and remains within the living being to accept this or not another chair and uh, take this one these chairs out. Om again to Miranda Sia Gina Dana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Maha 
Shema Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shemakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Kacharine Nirvishay Sasunya Vadi Pasyatya De Satarne Vancha Kalpa Tulu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pae Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Sivasadi, Gaur, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna mentions, Samoham Sambhabhute Shunamay Dvaisa Stinapriya. I am equal to everyone. I am partial to no one, nor do I envy anyone. But the one who renders a devotional service to me is a friend, and I am a friend in him. Here we see from this particular verse how Krishna is equal to everyone. Although there were different grades of people, Krishna is not uh, partial to any of them. He, he sees them all as his parts and parcels who are equally uh, uh, equally meant to receive his mercy. So he gives his mercy to others. And here, although he's coming into uh, Hastinapur, he's being greeted by all of these different types of people. He understands the etiquette. Although he is the he 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 doesn't have to follow any etiquette, still in order to set the standard for all of us, and to teach the value of of honoring etiquette, he uh, acts accordingly. So it's interesting. There are eight different ways the Lord receives different types of people. He bows his head to those who are superior. He exchanges greetings, such as smiling. And uh, here it's called, he embraces some. He shakes hands with some. We would think, is that part of the Vedic culture? He mentions here. He looks, gives smilings. And by his glance, he gives assurance. In other places, he awards benedictions. So he is never, uh, what we say, a impervious or, or disrespectful to the living entities who are his parts and parcels and he gives them all honor by receiving them accordingly now this is very interesting to see because krishna is transcendental to all all rules and regulations but the one, the quality of krishna is he is kind to all living entities and to show his kindness he keeps the etiquette, he keeps the way to uh, give pleasure and satisfaction to all kinds of living entities. Now we see all of these persons have come to meet the Lord. Um, even persons who are considered to be, when we say, persona non grata by the society, such as prostitutes and chandalas, still they came to see the Lord. And still, he treated them as he would treat anyone else. In other words, he gave them respect according to their position. So uh, here, uh, Prabhupada sums the whole thing up by saying, the Lord does not reject anyone. But still, we reject the Lord. That's the problem. Because we reject the Lord, uh, we cannot take the benefit of his association, nor of the nor of the mercy that he gives by that association. So um, the living entities in the material world are, what we say, adverse to uh, worshiping and associating with the Supreme Personality. What is that aversion? Um, one is based on ignorance of not knowing the relationship with the Lord. The second one is not wanting to know that relationship with the Lord. And they all in all, or the thing or the object by which one's desires can be considered to be successful. 
So therefore, the living entities in the material world, this is a place for those who have rejected the Lord. But still, the Lord never rejects us. He's always arranging, either through the material energy, through various situations, to wake us up towards uh, his devotional service, or he sends his representative, the Supreme Spiritual Master, who comes on his behalf, who is empowered by him to do the work of the Lord by bringing the conditioned souls back to Krishna, back to the spiritual world. Um, he sends himself in the form of knowledge, Shastra, Srimad Bhagavatam is considered to be non-different than Krishna. And it's mentioned that when Krishna left the planet, 5,000 years ago, it mentions in the Bhagavatam itself that he left himself in the form of a literary incarnation of himself, which is Srimad Bhagavatam. So those who, was, those, those who want to associate with the Lord can also associate with the Lord by taking the advantage of reading, understanding, and learning, and applying that knowledge from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's non-different than Krishna. He also comes in the form of prasadam, transcendental foodstuffs, which are offered in him, to him in love and devotion. He accepts it and he gives it back by entering into it by his transcendental shakti and those who take it in the proper mood, that is the mood of service, will get the benefit of that, that, uh, that mercy. So the Lord is always doing so many things or planning to somehow or other bring the conditioned souls back to him. Um, so what Prabhupada said, the Lord's love for his devotees is much greater than the love that we can ever uh, develop for him. He is the best in all categories and even in the category of loving relationships, relationships he is the best and the most uh, most he and, and he is the most attractive in any possible loving relationship so we get attracted to things in this world such as material things for our satisfaction on the material level such as mechanical and electronic devices we get fascinated with that. We can't have a loving relationship with that. Sometimes people actually develop that. There was one uh, story. It's a, it's, a, it's a story that was a few years ago where one boy who was a college student. He was with in his dormitory and he went on the computer and stayed on the computer for three days without getting off. He completely neglected his food, his sleep. After the third day, the end of the third day, he collapsed. Fortunately, uh, someone found him and brought him to the hospital. They were able to save his life. But he became so absorbed uh, in this electronic device that he could not. Now, if you were to try to do that same thing to well, we say some kind of knowledge that wasn't connected electronically, you couldn't do it. Your mind would not allow you. But these electronic devices pull the consciousness in where one forgets about everything. People forget about everything when they're on the computers. It's like it's a new, they enter into the cyberspace, get absorbed in it, and that becomes the reality of their, of their existence. So that's an example of how we get attracted to different things. We get attracted to our wife, to our husband, to our children. That attraction is okay, but if it becomes a replacement for our relationship with Krishna. Then it's Shrama Avery Kamalam. It's a useless waste of time. It, it, it diverts one away from one's real happiness and real treasure in life, Krishna. So um, this is our... This is our problem. As Prabhupada said, no one is rejected by the Lord. It's up to us to accept or not. And so Krishna goes out of his way to help us accept. 
migrating different facilities for us to become attracted to. So he comes in the form of his holy name. His holy name is non-different in himself. When we seriously, with devotion, chant his holy name, we get we develop an attraction for Krishna through the through of his name. And when it become, becomes even more powerful and more absorbing. So Krishna is so active. He's always active, trying to somehow or other find ways to attract us back to him in different ways. And if none of that works, then the material energy is there as his representative to give us, to make sure we don't become successful here. <laughs> and that is done in different ways. What is that lack of success? Is that we are by nature spirit in, in essence, and our, our, uh, we flourish on the spiritual platform. We may temporarily flourish on the material platform, but that temporary flourishing is more like a struggle to attain something which you'll ultimately have to lose anyway. So um, ultimately, this is Krishna's uh, say backseat mercy or backdoor mercy to give the living entities a way to become interested in him by taking away everything they're interested in in the material world. And that's his mercy. As Prabhupada would talk about himself, and that uh, Krishna, Krishna took everything away from me, my family, my children, my, my business, even my own ideas on how to preach Krishna consciousness. He left me with nothing but himself and the instruction of my spiritual master to go to the West. And because Baba said, when I finally did that, I understood everything that this is, this is what Krishna wanted. <laughs> and so what Krishna wants from us may be given to us by our spiritual master directly in the form of instructions or may manifest in the form of understanding his instructions in a general sense and learning how to apply that in the association of other devotees. Because when we don't receive instructions directly, uh, even if we do, but if we don't, then it becomes more difficult to stay fixed in the instructions of the spiritual master, therefore the association of like-minded souls who are trying to serve the Lord awakens our realization on how and how best how and how best to serve Krishna through serving the instructions of the spiritual master. So here, back to the essence of this particular verse, so you can see how gracious, how what a gentleman, what a uh, loving personality Krishna is. Although he is Atmarama, self-contained, he needs no one outside of himself, yet he uh, acts in so many uh, ways simply as a, as a means of compassion and concern for his parts and parcels. I was just reading the story of uh, Pingala, the prostitute in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and how she had uh, very strongly desired to uh, find some suitor who would be would be interested in, in, in taking what she had to offer and displaying herself in public and standing outside of her door. No one came. Her mind was constantly going from person to person thinking, will this person come? He looks quite rich. And she was uh, going, hoping, but no, no one came. Finally, she came to the point of complete frustration. That frustration led, led to a sense of detachment. When that detachment came, she felt happy. But then that happiness helped her understand that there is an attraction that she should be you know, keeping her consciousness on, and that was her relationship with Krishna. And after she finally gave up 
all of her desires to uh, find satisfaction in her profession and with the persons that she was uh, wanting to be with. And she was a different kind of prostitute. She was actually looking for a loving relationship through these various persons who would come to her. But it never happened. And she was left quite despondent, but that the tense of her despondency led to a sense of detachment and which eventually awakened her realization that yes, it is the Supreme Lord who is my eternal happiness, my eternal friend, my eternal relationship, my eternal lover. And then she makes her way into that by expressing how that she will now serve the Lord and completely in loving devotional service. So um, this is one, one example and a very prominent example of how Krishna shows special mercy by a particular, to a particular person by taking away everything they have <laughs> and <laughs> leaving them with just him. <laughs> But then there's no other choice. <laughs> that and then Prabhupada said he did that with me, um, and therefore he showed me special favor. As as the verse come, goes on, it's in the tenth canto, eighty eighth chapter, verse number eight, which says that when the Lord favors his devotee, he gives him everything. When he, when he really favors his devotee, he takes everything away. So there's only a few that get that special mercy. <laughs> but those who do, uh, they are the most fortunate. So, okay. And so here we see how that compassionate nature and that kindness nature is uh, exhibited in ordinary dealings with his different uh, living with different living entities and current terms according to their rank and their position. And again, Krishna is equal to everyone, but he reciprocates accordingly. The equality is that he gives his loving, he gives opportunities for loving relationships to each and every devotee. No matter what your position is in the material world, it's not a dis qualification to develop that relationship. This purport here shows that, indicates that very strongly, even the prostitutes, even the chandalas, anyone who uh, sincerely, sincerely and seriously wants Krishna has the qualification for chain, attaining Krishna simply by that desire, by that desire Krishna facilitates that desire by she, by, say, by bringing that person back to him in love and devotional service. This is a very beautiful verse. It's one actually, personally speaking, it's one of my favorite verses because it really illustrates how in a very ordinary way, Krishna deals with the living entities, but that ordinary thing is not ordinary because it's Krishna himself. <laughs> Therefore, because it's Krishna, it can't be ordinary. Okay, so I'll stop there and, uh, and then see if there's some questions. And then after maybe a few questions, we can have our special guest today, Chandra Prabhu. He is also here. He's a wonderful disciple, God brother um, of uh, Anusuya and many others of you who are also online, uh, Parikshit Prabhu. So, um, Let's take a few questions and then we'll hear from Chandra. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you very much for the class. And it's also nice to know that this particular text is your favorite too. <laughs> um, and she has to step out a little bit and she'll be back a little later. Um, and so she's asked me to kind of co-host for now. So can, you, uh, can, can you bring it back to the uh, main screen? Well, I think. Yeah. Stop the share um, Okay, I'm not the expert at it, but um, yeah, I'll have to do it. I'll just have my daughter do it in a minute. Um, so if you don't mind, yeah, she'll do it, but can we go to the questions now? Because there's somebody whose hand is up. 
in the meantime. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, I like to see. I like to see the questions. Yes. In the areas, you know. Okay. Um, Linda, can you do it? Or is it is it is it Vishaka? Vishaka, Vishaka is going to work. Um. Okay. Question. So, Prabhu, you, I don't know your name. You says SP13. Can you, yeah, unmute and then ask questions? Hi, uh, Krishna. Uh, dear devotees, dear Maharaj, Chandra Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, can you please uh, clarify maybe a little uh, more for us this concept that uh, Krishna, for his pure devotees, he takes everything from them, as we can see that pure devotees like Radhanath Swami, like yourself, uh, that whatever you will gain, you, you get a lot of things so you can serve the uh, Krishna with that. So how to understand this? Uh, I, mean, I didn't Radha say Krishna. only, he doesn't know, I didn't only say his pure devotees, I said that only though he favors, and he can favor anyone, he favored the prostitute also, you know, Pingalant, by taking everything away from her. So then one can come to the platform of pure devotional service. But the Lord, he, 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 he relegates who he wants to favor. He can favor anyone. And Prabhupada said he favored me. And then he, he gave uh, uh, everything to Prabhupada so he can serve him nicely. And this is a phase where yeah, but okay. he took everything away from him. He, he almost he took he almost took his life away when Prabhupada was on the boat. There was nothing. Prabhupada had nothing except uh, all he had was a an address in America. That's all he had, and seven dollars, which is useless in America. Seven uh, 40 rupees, which is equal to about seven dollars. Prabhupada had nothing, zero. No con uh, one contact, which was quite obscure. At the same time, he had uh, 70 years old. He had left everything behind. He was simply on, a, on an ocean voyage to a land that he didn't know anything about, which was completely different than, you know, his home. It was like a whole foreign environment with very different culture, very different environment, people, food, everything was different. But Prabhupada had faith. Because he had that faith, he continued on. And that faith led Krishna to give him everything he needed to do his service and at the same time elevate him to the platform of being one who understands and can give understanding to others of the process of pure devotional service. So Krishna can favor anyone, not just the pure devotee. Should we try to uh, be more renounced in our practice? So to try to renounce it more and more, uh, we kind of feel maybe it's connected to this. Well, renunciation is understood in different ways. As when we have nothing to renounce because nothing is ours. Mm -hmm. So when you renounce the idea that you have something to renounce, then you renounce. Mm -hmm. Because everything belongs to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But we claim things and ideas. We even claim our independence. And so when we start to understand that everything belongs to Krishna, everything is meant for his service, and I am, uh, my happiness, satisfaction, elevation, and progress in life all depends on my relationship with Krishna. These uh, the other things that we have can get in the way of our relationship with Krishna if we give that more important attention or facility. Hmm. So these things can be used. But the, the, the thing we have to renounce is our separate existence. That's, that's, the, that's the main form of renunciation. That we think we're separate from the Lord. We're not. 
देखिए महाराज ठीक है ओके एवरी एनी अदर कमेंट्स और क्वेश्चंस आई नो विच अंडर प्रभु इज गोइंग टू बी अलाउड टू ऐड मोर which is his relations but are there any questions so he'll give a additional he'll uh, give additional information and then we'll continue on okay um no more questions it doesn't look like it not right now okay maybe shringa lila has one on the chat Yeah. Um Oh, okay. Dear Guru Maharaj, we see that Christmas associates in Vrindavan um let's see. <clears throat> and Dwarka and many other places uh, um live in opulence or live in opulence in Vrindavan they bathe with cow's milk. That means that from an absolute point of view it's the same. So does that mean that absolute from the point of view it's the same? I have to see the question. I I can't. Let me see if I can connect to the question in the chat here. How do you get to the chat here? Okay, go to the chat. Okay. In Vrindavan they bathe with cow's milk. So that means that from the absolute point of view it's the same. Mm-hmm. uh there's a discussion between lord chaitanya and uh, um venkata but who was the father of uh, gopal but the goswami and explaining the difference because gopal but the goswami was an aishwarya bhav he was worshiping lakshmi narayan and crew lord chaitanya on his mood is rindavan so there was a discussion about the opulences so the opulences of rindavan are a different style type of opulence the opulence of the beauties of nature streams and forests and um cows and deers and beautiful people and lord chaitanya illustrated that that is the simple opulence of indavan which attracts krishna even more than the opulence of vaikuntha so bathing in cow's milk there's so much milk available that to bathe in cow's milk would be just using what surabhi ji has given in her w- way to serve the, the living entities yeah. to acknowledge her gifts by using them in different ways but they don't use any soap <laughs> the cow's milk itself has a cleansing principle in it thank you my eyes Um, okay thank you any other questions um okay this is this the end of the chat here yes yeah, yeah. yeah that's no, one question on the chat that's uh, all right any other questions yeah. um all right so maybe can jendra speak now maraj or Oops. I did what I used to do. Mm. So, thank you. Okay. Okay, so Chandra Prabhu will uh speak a little bit about the same verse and add a few important points and we can continue with the questions and answers okay uh, hari krishna everyone please accept my obeisances all glory to god but um just to add one other piece that maharaj was uh, identifying about krishna and greeting 
the types of greetings. Uh, one of the things that he mentioned was there's this tendency to, even the Lord is so merciful, he's, he's greeting everyone. He's not making some distinction in terms of their classification. On the other end, we do. Um, there's a tendency, um, some may ask, um, well, these scriptures are so old. They're out of, they're out of place. It's out of time and circumstance. Uh, but we can see the very things that we appreciate today when someone greets us. It's actually the very thing that Shri Prabhupada came. And we talked, Maharaj and I talked about this, about impersonalism and voidism. So you see Krishna, um, you know, ironically enough, he's the supreme person and he has the supreme personages. And then he's being personal with people. He's establishing relationship. So there's no exclusion. Um, no one's excluded from relationship in this way. However, we oftentimes may discount uh, the Bhagavatams as being outdated. And we see here's an example, things that we actually do appreciate. Someone shaking their hands, some of you who work or meet people on the street or you're purchasing something, maybe from a sales agent, we shake their hand, pat them, patting on the back and then also giving obeisances. So, so there's a lot of things to consider how valid and how timely the, the Bhagavatam uh, in, in reference to this particular sloka. So it's just something, it's, it's some more food for thought to think about personalism, how to be personal and how Krishna is setting example how we should be personal and greet one another according to the stature that we're at. Whether you're a father to your daughter, um, mother to a son, um, senior to a junior or someone who's on the same platform. I'll leave it open for rebuttal or questions or comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bro. We have a large cadre of personalities on board here. So, <laughs> so who's going See. to ask a question? Or give a comment. Rather we know Dini. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I just oh uh Radha you know Dini, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj and Hare Krishna Chandra Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances, Agurais to Srila Prabhupada. Uh thank you very much uh, for this uh, nice nice topic. And uh, also, also uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, this last point, uh, which you mentioned, Chandra Prabhu, was very, uh, very touching for me because uh, I actually very much struggle with this point. Uh, I remember that uh, sometimes I, I, I very much had this difficulty that I was so much into philosophy that uh, I just forgot and didn't even notice the necessity of uh, being personal with. Uh, with uh, devotees and with uh, other people too. And I would just like to ask, uh, how is it possible to, to practice this? <laughs> how, to, how to be more personal? Well, the, the general problem with personalism is that we're impersonal to ourselves. And that begins with, we give attention to the material effects. Maharaj was saying this, but also the material body. Um, it's a covering. I wear nice clothes. Um, I look attractive. I wear nice, I have a nice car. I have some status. So Maharaj and I were talking about this form of impersonalism uh, or envy that we practice on ourselves. So in essence, we lack love of self. And if you look at Krishna and in, in very, very, uh, um, elevated souls, they have a high degree of love for themselves because um, that sense of equanimity that, that Krishna has, we can have 
um, appreciating the vehicle. And I've said this before, we should not um, confuse the vehicle for the destination. And so all the things that we put all our interest in time, which is temporary in the first place, um, it's just a vehicle. It's something for us to stand on to help us travel too. But we usually stop there. So if we really want to practice it better, um, we have to treat ourselves better, um, eat better, um, take rest better, you know, things like that. And then when you're energized, it's a little bit easier to associate people in a better way because we're not so grumpy, you know, I mean, you know, put, put it frankly, but we just don't do a lot of self-care. And I think if we invest in self-care, then it's possible. You, you, have, you have room to care for others um, because you're liking yourself. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, from a Christian standpoint, there's the uh, uh, Yeshua, Christ says, love thy neighbors, thyself, but we can't love our neighbors because we don't love ourselves. So we have to find, maybe even perform an exercise in uh, what are the aspects of my soul that's, that's desirable, that's likable. And then you can start associating those with Krishna. Krishna has this, I have this too, but it's in minute quantity, but it's enough to make me loving. So hopefully I answered your question. Yes, thank you very much. It was very, very interesting point, uh, actually, that these, these two are connected. Uh, and uh, come to think of it, uh, yeah, I also experienced this uh, before, that uh, how much uh, sometimes I tend to be harsh on myself too. And, um, and uh, just that uh, kind of mentality, I project uh, this to, to others. Uh, on the other hand, I, it just came to my mind that um, it's, 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 maybe it's also about empathy because uh, sometimes uh, I, I have this feeling that I just, because I don't feel other people's suffering and problems, uh, it's more, more difficult for me to, to, to react in a proper way. Like uh, I, I react like, like they don't feel the suffering the same way I do. And, uh, and, and I also have a problem a little bit with this one. Well, it's, a, it's an easy process if you approach it. If you ever go on festival and you, you see another uh, devotee with the same sorrow, mm -hmm. yeah, you see people who are wearing the same thing. So based on that, you can relate to them. It, it's, it's a stepping stone in, in um, empathy. Or you find someone, oh, my, my father died, your father died. They're, they're just entry points to, to be able to relate. So there's plenty of things we just have to pay attention to. You're, you're right. We, 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 we're so absorbed in the vehicle, right? We forget about the destination. So our goal is love. And there's so much love out there that we don't, we don't pay attention to it because we think the body or the body effects are the all in all. So it's an easy step process. You look at your own, I'm suffering because I am disconnected. So connect yourself with the soul. It sounds kind of redundant, but connect yourself with the soul and then you can actually perceive more. Empathy will come. Thank you very much. It was very, very helpful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Um, there's a question in the chat from Brett, if I could read it. Um, it says, it's a long one. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Maharaj, in the Christian faith, hmm. <clears throat> we hear a lot of um, faith, we hear a lot of only God can judge me, but within my reflections and realizations, I often think, what business does Krishna have to judge me when he only wants to enjoy? He's already the perfect judge of time and circumstances. Actually, Rupa Goswami describes in nectar devotion, and he always wants us to realize our goal and stray from sin. And so if we're acting in the mode of goodness and growing in spiritual life, then why should we worry of judgment from Krishna? 
Others will judge us at every turn they can with everything from harsh words to social bias. But if our morality aims towards goodness, it should supersede our consciousness, um, allowing us to access the agency for goodness at most times in our interactions. So Maharaj, why is man so subject to judge and why is Krishna not as interested to judge? Why, why, is, why are we subject to what? What is that last sentence? Why are we subject to judging? Well, people tend to do that. That's what he, he prefaced at the beginning. And why is Krishna not as interested to judge? Well, he doesn't judge us because he sees us as who as we are. Mm -hmm. But he also understands our situation and he tries to raise us up. What is the benefit? What is the use of judging? Judging is based on the idea that it's kind of done by a sense of comparison, to mm -hmm. compare something with something else. But Krishna sees us as who we are, although we are we we see ourselves different from how he sees it. So mm -hmm. we judge because it makes us feel good when we're when our judgment is something better than what we are judging. But then when we see something that we that's lower than our judgment or more elevated than our own judgment, we also feel unhappy. So it's a, it's a sense of envy. It's it's okay. expressed as enviousness. So one of the qualities of a devotee is non-judgmental, is that they relate to people as who they are rather than what, what the, the material arrangement looks like or appears to be. Mm. But Krishna, he, why would he judge? A, a judging aspect is based on trying to gain something. He's not trying to gain something, he's trying to give something. He's trying to give us himself by helping us understand our relationship with him and how to uh, take advantage of that, of that relationship. So does, does, a, does a, I mean, uh, if the uh, mother is with the baby and the baby is passing stool, the mother don't say, oh, what a baby passing okay. stool. It's, you know, starts judging the baby for doing things that it's not. The mother doesn't really find easy to deal with or inconvenient or something that's unpleasant. So even though we may do something wrong, he doesn't judge us. He tries to correct us. It's not about judging. Judging, judging a lot puts one in a position of, of criticism. Hmm. So Maharaj, in this case, you're, you're describing that Krishna doesn't judge devotees. Is there mm -hmm. a distinction that can be made between devotees and non-devotees when it comes to that? Uh, you have to speak a little bit louder. I, I, yeah, you're going to have to speak a little louder. The voice is so low that we're not getting the volume here. Okay. All right. I'm not so used to this computer. Um, uh, the the follow-up. I was uh, coming up to follow up after Brett's question, the way you answered it. The Christian is not actually judging. Um, so how does that correlate with the situation with non-devotees? Because Yamaraj is making a note of everything that they do. And Yamaraj definitely is going to be a judge at the very end. So does that fit into Yeah, he judges. Part? He judges in order to give them what they, what they deserve. Mm. Okay, that's Krishna's agent for judging, but directly Krishna is not like that. He's just trying to um, awaken our loving relationship with us through very through devotional service. Mm. But those who distance himself from from Krishna by trying to enjoy the material energy and become and do not take advantage of. Uh, the opportunity to connect with Krishna, and he has his judging agents, mm. and that's and that judgment is simply to purify them. It's not about putting them down. Mm. Punishment is another form of purification. 
to get rid of some disease, sometimes you have to apply medicine that is not very pleasant. Because if he, he didn't correct them through the to the power of punishment, then then the soul would be born in an, in the next life with all of that heavy bad karma, and they would just suffer unlimitedly. Mm -hmm. So that punishment gets rid of their uh, gets rid of the reactions of their sinful activity, and hopefully. They'll be situated in a better position where they can uh, move forward in their next life. But that's Yamaraj. He has to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's his duty. He's the, he's the uh, superintendent of the jail. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Is there anyone else with questions or comments? But we got a, a Chandra is going to add something. Sure. So, uh, Pariksha, I think you can appreciate this on your on the last part of your question. Mm -hmm. So, when you're teaching at a university, you have students who are contracted to take your course, and at the end of the semester, there's the midterm or or final, and then you have midterms. So uh, based on that contract, those students will be judged, or you can use the word measure, because judgment is also measurement. So from the standpoint of Yamaraj, when we come into this material world, we're in a classroom. And because we are free to uh, engage in certain activities, those who are taking the transcendental path, um, they perhaps can pass the midterm and the final, and then they can move on to the next grade. So essentially when we're using this term judgment, um, we're thinking about it in a, you know, a more material way versus in a transcendental space, the application's different. But in actuality, there's really only one reality and that is the transcendental reality. So if we look at it in terms of lessons that we're learning, then we can actually remove the material judgment out of the circumstance and then understand it at a higher plane that I'm being given lessons, but I'm choosing to not pass the grade. So therefore I'll have another opportunity such as in the court of Yamaraj, you're being conditioned and suited again so that you can go through another process so that you have an opportunity to pass the grade. Okay, thank you very much. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, Raj, you got a question? It looks like you're ready to ask something. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Actually, I don't have any questions today. I thought everything was crystal clear and I had absolutely no reason to ask any questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. And a statement and a comment. <laughs> Well, and, many, yeah, many, 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 many powerful points in that in that one statement. Thank you. Okay. Brent also said, just back, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much. Then he complimented me for following up, grateful for the association. Thank you for the takeaways. We're not being judged by, but Krishna does give us the opportunity in every second for advancement. So this is what... Uh, he got as the realization from his question and my follow up. Good. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, we, uh, yeah, do we want to continue with uh, maybe one round of Japa or yes. should we close? Well, it's up to you. We normally, I was going to ask you if, if definitely if you want to do that. Um, yeah. Okay. We can do that. Right. Uh, Anasuya is will Anasuya return or she's out? Yeah, for the day? She's, well, we have a situation now. She, she's kind of forced to one of us had to go drop off Vishaka at work, so she did that. And this is oh. just, it's one way, and then Vishaka had to get to work at eight, 
So okay. So probably it will be about eight. All right. So we'll uh, we'll end with one round of Japa. Okay. Yes. I'll be right back. I'll get you beat. Thank you very much, Mike. You want to be back? Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vedadara Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Krishna Hari Hari Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Krishna Hari
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Rama, Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna. Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Krishna, 
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivindam Sri Allah Prabhupada Ki Jai Our basis to all of the devotees Vansha Kalpa Tarubhis Chakri Vasudhi Vasudhi We hope to see you again man. very soon Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Hare Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. See so many nice devotees. We got Danvantari, we got Namrata, Sukhavi. Of course, Pariksit's there twice. <laughs> He's yeah, I was sitting on, uh, now I'm sitting on, on CSJ. That's why I'm only... <laughs> But normally, yeah, he's here to Kirti, who is the sage in Mayapur. We got Prem, Prema Bhakti, the Srinya Leela, who is eager for Krishna consciousness, Valentina from Zagreb, Ivana from Zagreb, and then one of my favorite drivers, we got Ranji Prabhu Haribo. Mm. And Ram Babu from the uh, echelon of Harrisburg. <laughs> mm. And we got Madan Gopal, who has appeared as Lord Nishringadev. <laughs> we got uh, Rinda. And Rinda, she's there. Okay. Arch in the city. Haribo. Anuradha. Mahima, Manima, and Susanna and Suzanne. We got Susie twice. Okay. And Manoj. Thank you all for being here today. And um, we hope to again see you again. And please continue to take advantage of this wonderful service provided by the devotees of Harrisburg who are in, eager to give Krishna consciousness in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam discussions to everyone. Hey, Krishna, thank, you. thank you. And we will offer our obeisances. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. And thank you. Thank you. Hey, well, hey, well, hey, well. Hey.